The, the name of the game, particularly when using liquids, is using it as a proactive measure to prevent the bond of snow and ice. Hi, I'm Phil Sexton with WIT Advisors. So let's, let's think about this analogy that I've always loved to use. If you, if you took a stick frying pan and did not spray some sort of a non-stick formula to that, um, what would happen if you took, say, a, a, a nice juicy steak, fried it rather than grilled it on that pan? What would happen? You may actually burn or destroy the steak, but in the process, you're also creating this bonding onto that pan. That's essentially the same thing that we do as sort of business as usual now on our parking lots and our sidewalks. So why wouldn't we approach it proactively the same way we, do, we would do with a stick pan by spraying something on it first? So that's really that proactive bottom-up approach that then the benefits of that are if you thought about scrubbing that pan clean again, how much effort would it take to do that with it being sprayed proactively first versus not sprayed. And then if you think about it, that's literally gonna be four times the amount of effort and therefore also about four times the amount of soap, scrape, a little bit more soap, scrape a little bit more. Isn't that the same thing that we're doing to our parking lots now? We salt, we scrape, we salt a little bit more, we scrape a little bit more until we finally get that last layer of bonding off the surface. Let's put, all, let's put this analogy into a bit more real context here. So a scenario is this. The, the name of the game, particularly when using liquids, is using it as a proactive measure to prevent the bond of snow and ice. When we prevent the bond, that allows us as snowplow operators to then achieve a clean scrape or close to it. Versus if we, if we fail to prevent the bond in the first place, then any vehicle traffic, including our own when we're plowing, is going to create hard pack on the surface. So again, the name of the game is uh, prevent the bond, prevent the bond, prevent the bond. From there, what we have to think about is, so what are we trying to achieve beyond that? What we don't want to expect is that preventing the bond is going to actually prevent snow from accumulating. That's many times where I've seen this oversold. So let's not oversell the benefits of this. The, that could be a benefit, depending on if other conditions that um, you know have an effect on that are at play. That's that's both air and surface temperature, and it's also um, moisture content or relative humidity. So those have a have a bearing on whether or not that proactive measure is going to also save you accumulation. But there will be times when it does. Just don't expect it every time. If we get that clean scrape, now let's think about that just like the frying pan analogy. How much more effort is it going to take to then keep that surface clean or to clean it up to perfect? Literally four to ten times less salt. So think about now all you have to do is just spray liquid again. Sometimes uh, like in, in this particular product right here, you can take it from a, a pencil tip all the way to a fan tip. If it's me, I, I want to I direct liquid apply this proactively with a pencil tip and then move on to using a fan tip to then just maintain the level of brine on the surface and then just to get that nice even coverage so that any glazing effect that has occurred is dealt with immediately. Rather than think about if you try to, if you try to deal with that same glaze effect with a solid material, Instead of an instant reaction with the liquid, you now have to then have that, wait that 30, 45 minutes, an hour time frame. Again, depending on the temperatures, depending on relative humidity, for that to react to moisture either in the air or if there's any accumulation still coming down. Would you rather deal with it immediately or wait 30 to 45 minutes or more?